Right, we're going to start off with the first debater. And that's from the affirmative team, Sean Legrand. Now, Sean Legrand, possibly chosen for this event for his surname, <laughs> is a lawyer with the Victorian Government Solicitor's Office. That's a very big government law office. And they advise the Victorian Government. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to. Some, oh, I didn't, I, no, I meant somebody, you know, they have to have lawyers to advise them. <laughs> you all understood what I meant. Anyway, he advises Victorians' governments, departments and agencies. Sean has also worked as a lawyer with a big international law firm, Norton Rose, and he's still alive to tell the tale. Before that, he kept the courts amused as a barrister for 10 years. Now, Sean tells me that he's actually avoided working in small firms throughout his career, just in preparation for tonight's debate. <laughs> He's therefore arguing his team's case from a position of obvious bias against and ignorance of small firms, <laughs> and that makes him eminently qualified to debate it. Sean Legrand. Well, as first speaker for the affirmative, I don't get an opportunity to respond to the other side's arguments, which is a bit of a fizzer. So I thought it was only appropriate and fair in all the circumstances that I should tell you tonight, I give our opponents a three. <laughs> now, debating is all about the art of persuasion. And after thinking deeply about the persuasive strength of my own arguments, it seemed clear to me I should try hypnosis. <laughs> so three, two, one. You are now all partners in Melbourne's biggest law firm, Brass, Biggins and Wow. <laughs> hey, like your suits. Now, you will all see things differently from now. Let's just take a quick look at outside our boardroom window. Look, across the night sky flying there. That's an aircraft lease. What potential. And down there, that's not the 7.45 p.m. to Ringwood. Going into Southern Cross, no, that's rolling stock. Going into a PPP. <laughs> and we can see all these superannuants there walking over infrastructure and driving over tollways. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a window of opportunity. Oh, look, down there. I can see it just behind those wheelie bins above the pet shop. I think it's one of those small firms. <laughs> you see, under hypnosis, our arguments make perfect sense, like our artwork in the foyer. <laughs> we call that sculpture success, brackets, a pillar of bottoms. Now, big firms prevent, present a very slick image to the rest of the world. Decor, st dress code, style guide, podcasts, logo, pro bono. Don't overdo it. <laughs> a client wants a clever little fit bugger who's in it to win. Psychopathic, preferably. Latte, oh, skinny soy chai, rather. <laughs> now, quirk firms are pretty smally. Oh, Freudian brick, oh, I mean slip. Small firms are pretty quirky. They do things by half, in analogue, in 2D, and not today. Mago Chino. <laughs> Ever wondered why small firms insist on calling themselves barristers and solicitors? It's because they want everyone looking at their shingle to think, oh, there must be at least four of them up there working above the pet shop which is three more than reality. <laughs> Desperate to be bigger. Now, small firms, on the other hand, offer the opportunity for great personal freedoms in the workplace. I'll concede that right now. For example, in a small firm, you can go to work freely every day in a Jenny Key jumper. I'm talking that multicolored pipe cleaner bizzo on a garment, on a lawyer, at work, free to do it in a small firm. Now, there's nothing the Law Institute can do about it. <laughs> However, the Ethics Committee 
has written to all small firms and suggested that these garments be donated to the Children's Television Workshop for repairing Elmo and other monsters on the cast of Sesame Street. <laughs> now, we've seen the mags, Lawyers Weekly and those online rating agencies that rate big firms and big deals. Well, if our opponents have it their way, we might see something like this in the near future. List of five least influential lawyers of the month. <laughs> this month, this month we read about a lawyer who is so lacking in influence, he swipes his Mikey card just to feel validated. <laughs> or, what about smallest marketing spend? Yes, this week we find out about a firm whose only expenditure on advertisement this year has been a pop-up. Ten smallest, for, look, ten smallest law firms for 2012. Yes, the smallest is so small, there's insufficient space to use the metaphor of the elephant in the room. <laughs> Big firms have in their digital engine room a suite of powerful systems and platforms to help them deliver their corporate legal services. Database management systems, email platforms, time recording, etc. Whereas small firms have in their digital engine room angry birds. To the small firm lawyer, it's tax deductible and each full day of play is worth a CPD point. <laughs> now, in big firms, lawyers have lunch made in-house so they can eat at their desks. Fantastic. A gym in the building, only three minutes from their desk. Yay. On the nights they go home, they can log on again. Log on again from home. Good. Always contactable via smartphone and always able to see their work emails rolling in day, night, weekends. Sean, can't you, hear Bar mitzvahs. The, can't you hear the bell? Yes, I beg your pardon, Your Honour. There's no doubt at big firms, they haul in your life and your work and they put it all into balance for you. I like to call it yin and yank. Now, small firms do offer a measure of work-life balance that's hard to achieve in a big firm. Hidden from public view above the pet shop, all that small in, smallness and quirkiness provides the balance of conveyancing boredom and defalcation excitement. Now, I'm not saying that fiddling with client money occurs only in small firms, that's one of our later arguments, but it seems that the smallness and all the quirkiness hidden away going on up there gets a small firm lawyer to thinking, Mr Jones's trust money needs investing. And black caviar is gonna lose today. I would have made him sit down if it was in my court. 